Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the last uh, video, review video for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. It's now Sunday. Uh, the short list will be announced on the 26th, which is Wednesday morning. Uh, I mean, it's Wednesday and it will be announced on uh, Wednesday morning, um, 7.30, I think, UK time. So I'm just just in time uh, to be finished uh, with my reviews. I've finished the last book uh, just last week. So it's another batch of three, as you could have seen from the thumbnail. And as always, it was kind of a mixed bag, but also with some really, really wonderful surprises in it. So the first of the three, I'm going to review the last three is Stephen Copperhead, uh, Fire Rush uh, and uh, Black Butterflies. The last two are debuts. Demon Copperhead, with which I start, is of course Barbara Kingsolver's latest novel. Disclaimer I am not a huge Barbara Kingsolver fan. I tried, but it's just not an author that really speaks to me. Not even her most famous uh, early books like the Poisonwood Bible or uh, lacuna and certainly the later work that I tried uh, it didn't work for me at all it was way too preachy for my taste but again Barbara Kingsolver is loved by many and admired by many so that is more it just doesn't work for me she doesn't work for me her work doesn't work for me and that also goes for Demon Copperhead um, it's it's a pretty big novel, sprawling novel, um, referenced to David Copperfield about the poverty of a child, you know, uh, Dickens's more or less autobiographical work on how a child can overcome hardship and poverty in particular. It is a, uh, um, Dickens' work is a real uh, jacuzzi about uh, childhood poverty and that we do have to do something about it. So the demon copperhead is a reference, but it's not a retelling. Um, I, I, w I certainly wouldn't call it that because it, it, it has its own um, context and merit. It's set in present day Appalachia in the really poor, uh, white, uh, community. And the main character is um, Demon Copperhead, we follow his life. He tells us about his life from his early childhood. I think the first sentence is something like, first I had to be born or, or I had to get born or something. So it's really from the very beginning until uh, his uh, adulthood when he is in his 20s or 30s or something. So he, he adult Demon Copperhead is looking back at his life and telling us his life. Um, and Barbara Kingsolver, I mean, she is a very skillful writer. So even though the book is long and I felt it dragged with over 600 uh, pages, for me, it was not necessary. I mean, it's not an argument for me that David Copperfield is long. So if you write a modern day David Copperfield novel, it also has to be long. I, I don't see the, you know, the sense in that argument. But apart from the fact that I felt it could have definitely could have been shorter, but again, that's a personal thing. She can tell a story. Uh, the language, um, the way she describes uh, things. And I mean, yes, a very skillful author. What didn't work for me personally, and I mean, I'm ab absolutely in the minority here because most people just love the book. But for me, it first of all, I have always, uh, I struggle with that type of structure that an adult would be looking back uh, at the childhood uh, because, first of all, we don't really know whether it's an after-the-fact interpretation of the life or whether the child actually felt that way when he was, he in this case, he was young. Um, and I always find it, 
yeah, it, 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 it doesn't help me with the suspension of disbelief. If people look back 20 years, uh, when they were five or six, or even, you know, looking back from older age to when you were 20, and then you have these dialogues, they obviously remember everything. I, I, it's just, I mean, it is a structural, a tool, I understand that, but for me, it, it, uh, yeah, like, like I said, the best way for me to explain it, why it really doesn't work that well, is that it, um, it goes against the suspension of disbelief for me. It, I have always this voice in my head, oh, you remember this? And did you really feel that way when you were a child? Anyway, so that is something. But the, the main issue I had with the book, and I used that phrase a couple of times when I talked about um, Women's Prize long-listed books, it felt written from the outside in. In other words, it didn't feel authentic coming from that main character. Uh, it felt as if uh, the author had a list with um, very important issues, child poverty, the opioid crisis, uh, uh, poverty in general in a certain region, the violence that goes with it, uh, but also the uh, non-functional uh, child care system, foster system. So she had this list and then it was just checked. You know, a teenage mother, check. Um, a bad stepdad, check. A very bad foster system, check. And then, of course, the big one, Oxy. It just... It felt like a really important theme, and if maybe it had been an essay, it would have worked for me, but it felt like an essay, you know, just pushed into the form of a novel, and that's why it just did not work that well for me. Um, uh, it will make the shortlist for sure, but and many people loved it. Again, if that theme appeals to you, give it a try. If you are um, a, a lover of Barbara Kingsolver's work, if other books worked for you, this might work for you as well. But for me, it was just, I mean, it is in the top six uh, in my list, uh, but it, it was not a top novel for me. Um, the next one, um, is a debut novel by um, a UK author, Welsh. Uh, I, I think one of her parents is from uh, is Welsh, and the other one is uh, from uh, the former Yugoslavia. Uh, Priscilla Priscilla Morris Black Butterflies. It's historical fiction in the sense, and a debut. Did I say that? <laughs> uh, it's historical fiction in the sense that it's set in uh, Sarajevo in 1992-ish. Um, so if you're not familiar with that time period in the former U Yugoslavia, that was the fall of Sarajevo, the internal armed conflict, the uh, uh, civil war in raging uh, through that country, uh, horrible uh, with you know, ethnic cleansing and genocide of Muslim uh, men. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with that part of history because I, when I was still a lawyer, I represented clients from that area uh, who lost family members uh, in the fall of Srebrenica, which was the Dutch enclave held by Dutch bad, the UN uh, the Dutch part of the UN forces, and they just, you know, they didn't do uh, a good job, to say the least. And a lot of Muslim men and uh, boys were killed, and it's the responsibility of Dutch bad who didn't, um, who didn't do what they were supposed to do, protect them. And Srebrenica, Srebrenica is about 120 kilometers east of Sarajevo, so I'm familiar with the conflict as such. Um, the story then follows a family focusing on uh, Zora, who is an artist and a teacher, caring for her elderly mother, uh, struggling with still doing her art while 
you know, her whole country explodes around her. And the premise of the book is that her elderly mother, who is not doing well, um, she sends her and her husband uh, to safety in England, at least for a little bit, you know, to recover, to recuperate a couple of weeks and then come back. She can't come because of obligations she has. Um, and she assumes that Either she will join them uh, in, in a month or two or they will come back once her mother is doing better. And of course, then war breaks out and the situation completely uh, explodes around her. And it's her tale of how she tries yeah, to cope, quote unquote, with the, with, with the situation. Um, the, the theme is certainly something that grab me. I didn't, again, it was the same thing with the, it didn't, I didn't feel anything. It didn't engage me in any way. And I did not get along with the language. The imagery um, was, it, it's already on the second or, I don't know, fifth page, 10 page, a sentence like, the cool blade of anxiety slid into Zora's belly. This is just not a language that works for me. It, it I, I mean, I giggled, <laughs> which is not <laughs> the reaction you should have when you read that somebody is so anxious that she felt uh, she felt a knife in her uh, in her stomach. But it's just not working for me. And once I have one or two or three of these sentences, again, the suspension of disbelief is gone, and I'm just looking for these markers, you know, to giggle again. So it just did not work for me, but it did work for other people. So maybe if you, yeah, don't take my word for it when it comes to language. I think the enjoyment of writing style or language is something really very personal. Um, and if the sentence that I just quoted with the, the, the cool knife, uh, uh, you know, it, it isn't bothering you, then maybe the language works for you. And then maybe it's not as, I felt like it completely, it, it kept me outside of the story. So yeah, it, it, I mean, it's certainly a writer that if she goes on writing, I will follow and maybe also read the second book. But this one, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't working for me unfortunately. Um, and now for the surprise, of course, I kept the best news for last, as always. Another debut novel, like I said, uh, Jacqueline Crooks, Fire Rush. Jacqueline Crooks um, um, is a Jamaican British author, so she is was born in Jamaica but lives in Britain, and the book is historical fiction. If you you know, everything that is happening in the past, if you call that historical fiction, it's set in the 1980s um, in the Jamaican uh, 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 community in London and partly also in Jamaica. Is it in Jamaica or on Jamaica? It's an island, so it's probably on Jamaica anyway, but it's a country, so it's in Jamaica. Help me, tell me, you you all, you English uh, mother tongue speaker. Um, the main character is a young woman, um, uh, 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 Amei, Amei, I think her name is pronounced. Um, and the, the setting is the subculture in the Jamaican community in England, in London, um, the reggae rave. So she, the, the, it's not partying that that's not, I don't want to give the impression it's a book about partying, you know, that it's not, it's a book about a certain subculture where this type of music and the crypt, which is the, the location, uh, where the more or less illegal raves are held, uh, every weekend, um, and the expression of your culture and your, it's also an escape, yes, but it's more an expression of your culture that is uh, done through that music. I am not a music buff. I mean, I went to the, uh, you know, to parties when I was young, that was the disco time. <laughs> 
don't, don't, don't quote me on that. But I, I have no real sense of the, the reggae or, or house music. It's, it, so it, it was not that easy for me to engage with the book. Um, I, also had as a non-English speaker um, a little bit of a difficulty to get into the Jamaican patois because it's written, I would say, one third of the book is in patois. Um, I tried the audiobook that didn't work for me, so I, I finally read uh, the, the, the printed version. And once I got into that, it really sucked me in. I think it's a extremely fresh, different, it tells me something, fresh, different book. <laughs> uh, it tells me something about a subculture that I have no knowledge of at all, didn't even know it existed um, in the 1980s. Um, the story is this, this young woman Again, trying to find her way, she had with her two best uh, girlfriends, and then she meets a guy, Moose, uh, and of course, hardship is is not only in in their lives, but then a tragedy strikes, and how she deals with that, and then there is a middle part that is really very violent and and horrible uh, for her. Um, and, but it's a hopeful book as well. I don't want to give too much away <laughs> because I don't want to spoil anything, but it just blew me away. I don't think I understood everything about the music and Jamaican culture, uh, when, uh, the part that is, uh, situated, uh, in Jamaica, but it's still, it, it felt so vivid and original and also interesting, even though the plot part at some, at, at times is a bit generic. So you could foresee what probably will happen. Not all of it, but a little bit, but it didn't bother me at all. Uh, and it's a debut, so it gets some lenience when it comes to these kind of laws. I, I, and I felt it was, um, probably the, the most exciting new book that I read from the short, from the long list. Uh, so Fire Rush was the big surprise for me, uh, took a little bit. And again, the reggae part, the music part, there is a lot of musical, uh, references, not, not so much, you know, to people that make music, but to the music as such. And the language is very much influenced by the music. And you just have to, I think, you know, step on that train and go for the ride and just let you, uh, let the author swoop you away so to speak so yeah i i thought it was a fantastic book um and it was the the last book i read so it was a really good end uh, to my journey of the long listed books anyway so these are the last three of the 16 long listed books i hope you enjoyed my reviews thank you very much for watching i'm caught up with the comments so you can now leave your comment in the hope that I will uh, answer uh, in not another four weeks time, but shortly. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.